So in this lecture, I'll use the same cancer prediction data set to show you two ways of construct histogram with Excel. The first way is go to charts, insert statistics charts, and then go to histogram. The second way uses Excel add-ins, the an analysis tool pack, data analysis, then histogram. Please open the cancer prediction raw data. Again, very quickly, the column class Y is the cancer diagnosis, one being cancerous patient, zero being benign patient. The next four columns are the biomarkers that are potentially predictive for cancer. And they are 255 rows, each representing a patient. Let's uh, first look at how to use statistics chart to produce histogram. Let's first select the column AFP, and then let's go to insert, go to insert statistic chart, insert the histogram. So to make sense of the chart, let's, let me first turn on the data labels. And then I would uh, move my cursor to the axis, x axis, and then I will right click, and then I will show format axis. Let me zoom in a bit. So we can see that by default, Excel will use the automatic option to produce the histogram. The first bin always starts with the minimum value of that column. In this case, the minimum of AFP value is 0.339. The last bin always include the maximum value. In this case, the, the, the AFP has the maximum value of 82.26. So this automatic result is far from ideal because of this outlier, which is the maximum value. What we want to do is to zoom in onto the first five bins on the left. So we can do so by assign manually an overflow bin. So overflow, overflow bin is the one that stays at the rightmost in the data range that catch all the data points over a certain values. For example, I would I would put um, 15 instead of 21 that is chosen by Excel because there are only a few points that are above 15. And also I would prefer a rounder number like 15 uh, over some random decimals. I can similarly chop off some point on the left to form a underflow bin, i.e. the leftmost bin. So let's just enter one for the underflow bin for now. So far I only have one, two, three, four, five, five bins between these two overflow and underflow bins which added up to seven in total. But I want to increase the number of bins in the middle to provide better resolution of the distribution. So since the width between 15 and one is 14, so let's try to change the bin width to one. Now this seems a much better histogram. One of the limitations of this histogram is it does not allow you to have an underflow bin that is less than the minimum value of the data range. For example, if I change 1 to 0, it will again use the minimum value in the data range as the left bookend for the first bin. Therefore, creating 
quite confusing looking bins because of the somewhat random decimals produced by the minimum value. So for the cancer prediction data set, I, I will use the second way, which is the Excel add-in uh, to create histogram. Because I need to be able to impose the same bin structure onto two different data sets i.e. the cancerous population versus the benign population. Also, I want to have the frequency and the cumulative frequency produced by Excel as well. However, this statistic chart, then histogram is a great way to get a sense of the overall distribution of a numeric column with large number of distinct values. In order to use the histogram from Excel add-in, you need to first go to File, Options, go to Add-ins, then click Go on the Manage Excel add-ins, and you need to select the an Analysis Tool Pack. So once you have done that, then you should be able to see a menu item called Data Analysis appear in the data tab. Since my goal is to compare the distributions between the cancerous and the benign groups, I need to create two separate histograms for them. So now I need to use pivot table to produce two different worksheets, each containing either zero or one group. So I will select the data set, I will go to pivot table and then I would place into a new worksheet and then I just need to drag class Y into the rows and again I just I can also drag class Y into the values area and let me just change it to count so it's not as confusing looking at the sum now, so this pivot table shows uh, the data set has been grouped into two. The first one is the zero group representing the benign patients that has 144 members in it. The second one is the, the cancer group has 111 members. So you just need to double click on each of the two groups. You will create two new worksheets. So this one, this worksheet, I will rename it to ONCE that captures all the cancerous patients in the data set. And then this worksheet that we just created earlier, by double click on, the, on that one cell from the pivot table. So this will be the worksheet that contains only the benign patients. So now I'm going to produce histogram the same way for both worksheets separately. I'll now start with the zero group. So in order to use the add-in histogram, we need to make the decision first about the bin structure. So you can do so by specifying a sequence of number to be used as the bookends of each bin. For example, I would generate a, a series of number from 0 to 15. Then I would put a header bin to describe what these numbers are for. I will first produce the histogram and then come back to talk about to make sense of these numbers. So you just need to go to data, go to data analysis, choose histogram. You need to first choose the, the input range, which is the raw data. In this case, it's going to be the column for AFP, for the zero group of the data set. The bin range is going to be the series of number plus the header that we just created. And here, you need to make sure to select labels because both the bin column and the raw data column 
has the header cell. Now I'm going to uh, place the output of the histogram right next to the 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 bin sequence we we created, and I also select output cumulative percentage and chart output. Now let's make sense of the bin numbers we we provided and also the chart that is just produced by Excel. So we provided 16 numbers. We produce 17 bins. So the first one, the first one is the underflow bin, which is any points that is less than zero would be included in this underflow bin. And since in this raw data set that we do not have any data point that is less than zero, therefore we see a zero in this uh, underflow bin. The second cell, the second bin, tells us there are six data points that are between zero and one. The third cell tells us there are 28 points between one to two, so on and so forth. But there is a bit of ambiguity here that we have not talked about so far. So, for example, if I have a data point that is equal to 2 exactly, which bin should it fall into? Should it fall into this bin, which is between 1 to 2, or should it fall into this bin, which is between 2 to 3? I'll leave this as an exercise for you to find out. The last bin is the overflow bin. It tells us that there are one point that is above 15. Now let's look at the chart produced by the histogram. So the, the blue charts, the blue bars are simply a bar chart for the frequency columns. And the, the the orange line chart is the is a line chart that represents this column, which is the cumulative percentage. Now I will produce the same exact histogram for the ones population. I will use the same bin structure, so the result is comparable. I'll copy the bin structure to the ones popu ones population. And then I will go to again data, data analysis, histogram, and make sure you choose the input range correctly. The bin range correctly. Again, make sure you select labels and output cumulative percentage and chart output. Again, I want to place the result right next to where I place the bin sequence. Now I'm going to just copy the result from both histogram into a worksheet so I can do a side by side comparison. I'm going to open a new worksheet and I would just paste as value. And remember, this, this is from the, the once population, so I would simply call uh, name it once frequency so I don't get confused later. And similarly, I would uh, put once in front of cumulative percentage. I will go back to the zeros worksheet and then do the same thing by copy and paste the histogram. And I would paste it here as value and then now again remember I'm just gonna put a zeros in front of frequency so I don't confuse the two different results. I'm also gonna create a column that shows the percentage. So I would call zeros percentage 
which is simply the number of points in each bin divided by the total number in each group. So you can do so by select this cell and divide it by sum of the whole column. And in order to be able to simply copy and paste the formula, I just need to make sure I put dollar sign in front of 6 and 22. I will do the same thing for the ones population. So this time I simply just need to copy the whole range because I know the formula should should uh, work here as well. Now let me change the format of all these columns that are percentage into percentage so it will be easier to comprehend. I'll change to percentage and then with two decimal places. I would do the same thing for these two columns. Right click, go to format cells, percentage, two decimal place. Next, I will uh, create a, a bar chart to compare the percentages. So I will select the two columns at the same time and then insert bar chart. Then I will create, I will select the two columns that are cumulative percentage and I will show them side by side as line charts. So I just noticed that I make a typo here. This should be once percentage. Okay. So now the reason that I only compare the percentage and cumulative percentage is because the percentage are not affected by the size of each group. Therefore, it's always comparable. And cumulative seems to be the easiest to see the difference between two distributions. So let me finish this lecture by making a final comment about histogram. So the main decision about creating a histogram is to determine where to place bin and how many bins to place. So there is not really a correct or incorrect way of place bins, but there are optimal and less optimal ways of doing it. So sometimes you might need to try a few different bin structure and see which one provides the best insights to the data set.